My name's Brett Edgington, I'm the Secretary of Ballarat Regional Trades and Labor Council and behind me is Ballarat Trades Hall, built in 1887 and the second oldest Trades Hall building uh, in the world. Continually occupied and still used today by the union movement for the same reasons that it was originally intended. It sits on the site of the former government camp where on the morning of December the 3rd, 1854, my, uh, soldiers left to attack miners on the Eureka lead. This is the Ballarat Regional Trades and Labor Council Council Chambers and Council's been meeting here since 1888. Um, we still meet here every month on the second Tuesday and it's really important to meet in this room knowing that um, some incredible decisions were made here. Um, people like Curtin and Scullin and some of the early Prime Ministers, a lot of Senators uh, sat here as delegates to this Council, debated motions. One of the really interesting things that happened in this room um, was 1954 when uh, Bob Joshua, the local federal member, split off with a significant number of the council to form the DLP in the Great Split. Uh, so this room's seen an awful lot of history uh, and it's great that we still meet here uh, as a council every month. Well, see, that, that's sort of the thing that you realise that from, from sort of the aim, the 1890s particularly, the AWU forms the most significant sort of player in this hall's history through to probably at least the 1940s. But yeah. so these are pretty significant. April 1891, uh, the 7th and Trades and Labor Congress met here in Ballarat. So it was a congress of representatives from all of the colonial union organisations. And they moved the draft scheme of federation, which included um, running political candidates for the um, ALF, the Australian Labor Federation, and then wrote these rules of, of the party. And it was only after that then that New South Wales and Queensland started getting candidates um, into parliament. So these are possibly the first rules of a Labor Party written anywhere in the world. Um, according to historians, is the second oldest surviving Eureka flag in the world, and it was created in 1942 by the Ballarat Trades Hall keeper, who used to live here on site, and was flown from the flagpole of our building on the 3rd of December 1942 to mark Eureka, and then taken on the Ballarat Labor Day march the following year. And the really interesting thing about the flag is that um, the local newspaper, The Courier, actually had to write a story to tell the people of Ballarat what the flag was. Um, Ballarat had always seen the events at Eureka as sort of a black mark and fairly inconvenient. And for many years, the story had almost vanished. Um, but had it not been for the union movement and for Trades Hall carrying the, the flag and the story, then we might not have it today. So this building here in Camp Street, just down from Ballarat Trades Hall, was the site of the Evening Echo newspaper, which was run by the AWEU. Um, a twice daily newspaper in Ballarat that really was the voice of the working people and relayed the news of Ballarat Trades Hall and the goings on of the day. The really interesting thing about the Evening Echo is it was the only newspaper in Victoria that during the conscription debate in World War I actually actively uh, opposed conscription and published a, a number of stories uh, in strong opposition to conscription at the time. So one of the other really important things that happened for the union movement in Ballarat, besides the foundation of the Labor Party and the second oldest trades hall in the world, was a meeting that took place in what is now uh, the red brick building behind us on the corner, but at the time was Ferns Hotel in 1886 when William Guthrie Spence and David Temple, shearers and miners unions, uh, called a meeting to amalgamate uh, the shearers and miners union uh, into one body. That was the birth of the Australian Workers' Union, what many people would regard as the first modern trade union in the world that actually then stood up for uh, wage rates, rights and conditions of their members. That body then started a national office in Creswick and sent out organisers right up into the colonies of Queensland and New South Wales and as far away as New Zealand to, uh, to start organising. Uh, and another really significant uh, event to see the birth of Australia's first, or the world's first modern trade union uh, here in what was Ferns Hotel in 1886.
So today, Ballarat Trades Hall is 28 affiliated unions and just over 17,000 members across the region that we cover and growing at the moment. It's fantastic to see as the population of Ballarat grows, as new industries are moving into the regions, uh, as health and education is expanding, we're picking up members. And since October 1856, um, for 162 years, we've very proudly served the union members of this region and will continue to do so.